If you enjoy winter, then you probably like all the stuff that winter makes possible, like skiing, sledding, making snowmen, and building snow forts. But to do any of these things, you need snow. And winter does not always equal snow. What if there's not as much snow at your local ski hill as there usually is? Or what if you're hosting the Winter Olympics at a resort on the Black Sea? And what if you also don't have a sister who was born with the freakish magical power to freeze anything she wants? Then you have to make the snow the non-magical way, the scientific way. And the science of snowmaking is more complex than you might think. Snow is precipitation composed of ice crystals. Unlike sleet or ice pellets, which is liquid rain that freezes on its way down to the ground, snow forms when water vapor skips the liquid stage and condenses directly into ice in clouds where temperatures are below zero degrees. The ice crystal then grows into a snow crystal, or snowflake, as it absorbs and freezes more water vapor. So making snow is basically all about creating a heat exchange, because heat has to be removed from water in order to transform it into ice crystals. For this to happen, the Ambient air temperature, the snowmakers call this the dry bulb temperature, has to be really cold. Even at zero degrees, any manufactured snow is likely to be low quality slush. But equally important is the humidity, the amount of water vapor in the air. When the ambient temperature is adjusted to account for humidity, it's known as the wet bulb temperature. And this is important because water cools by evaporating into water vapor. Your body uses the same process to cool itself. We call it sweating. So if it's too humid and the air is too saturated, the water can't evaporate as well, which makes it harder to cool down. So snowmakers hate high humidity almost as much as they hate low temperatures. They need both low air temperature and low humidity. When these conditions are at their sweet spot, most snow machines or snow guns at your favorite ski area can combine cooled water and compressed air to create tiny water droplets. And the smaller those droplets are, the better, because lots of little drops expose more of the water to the cold than fewer big ones. So snow guns use special nozzles to spray a fine mist that snow no gods willing, freezes almost immediately. To boost their chances, most snow machines also shoot that mist high up into the air, or even use elevated snow lances or snow gun towers. These allow those super chilled water droplets to stay in the air longer, so they have ample time to freeze and become that wonderful white stuff we need for skiing. So it's not done the same way nature does it, and it's not as easy as pointing your finger at whatever you want to freeze. But the science is almost as fun, and frankly, I don't care where it comes from or how it's made. I just want my snow, because I want my old off. Do you want to build a snowman? Thank you for watching this SciShow Dose and a double special extra thanks to our subable subscribers who make this whole channel possible. Would you like to be deemed the official SciShow President of Space? To find out how you can get that and other awesome perks, go to subable.com slash SciShow. And if you have a comment or a question or an idea for us, you can find us on Facebook and Twitter, and as always, down in the comments below. And don't forget to go to youtube.com slash SciShow and subscribe. <laughs>